be um, as that of an entrepreneur who is already existing and running mm -hmm. and wants to expand their operations. Sakama like startup have the greatest excuses, excusatices like we talk about. Yeah. And na mare and na this and na that. But majority of people don't like to start small. That's the greatest challenge we have. When I was you know, with one with two, with four, and they grow. They want, no, I need capital. Must that and, big? And, and I've, you know, there was one of uh, a guy who came up to me, and I'm going to a nice big badge, Mercedes, mm -hmm. iPhone 14, and oh, he's telling me, hi, I want to start a business, but I don't have capital. And I was like, <laughs> okay, um, what business do you want to start? <laughs> so, so with people, they it depends how hungry you are for what you want to start to succeed. Mm -hmm. And I'll take you back, for instance, when I started Pro Air, uh, I began, my office was my car. I had a quotation book in my car. That was my first office. I didn't have an excuse, could understand any office. I don't have this. And I used to have a manual quotation book. So mm -hmm. I started off writing manually quotations. You know, when people would ask, what was your address? I used to write my brother's address at his house. So I didn't have an excuse of not starting. Mine was, I had to start and I have to make it work. And I remember um, for me to get um, some of the products, some of the air cons initially when I started, mm. you know, I had to sacrifice a lot. I remember I sold my 323 um, to, you know, capitalize the business. I built good relations. And ultimately, that's what got us started. So, whenever or not, I don't have capital. I look at them and I say, what do you have that can actually help you to get started? Yeah. And some people have a lot of things, you know, that they can dispose of to start. I'll never invest in somebody who cannot invest in themselves or even support their True own story. business or dream. True story. Yeah. So, if I look at somebody, the guy who asked that question last week, Trust you me, Pani Maria we now you know gonna out at least you know print my business cards. You know, and and there's something that you can at mm. least start. At least send a quotation, get the money paid, then go and source the goods. You know, so people think what would that the office, the furniture, the this, the but that. Because that is but what then, we are seeing outside. I was speaking to a young lady a few days ago. Um, when I say young, I mean like young, fresh out of school. I think mm. she's 20, yeah. uh, but she works for a family business. So both mom and dad are involved in this business. And uh, she, she wants to be in, the, in, like in a different industry, totally different from what her parents are grooming her for. Mm. So I'm seeing the bigger picture of what the parents are doing. And she's good at the job that she's being given at the family company. But right? she wants to do something else. And so I, when I had the sit down with her, I, I, I asked her and she's like, no, I've already spoken to mom and dad and they, they want to give me 10,000. Could you tanga this business? I'm like, wow, do you know what's going to happen? You are not going to respect that business because you're going to go broke and you're going to like go back to mom and dad and be like, mama. And she's like, no, it won't. Ha no. Yeah. I'm thinking she has a, she has a passion. Yeah. But no structure. True. And um, I remember one of the greatest lessons I learned. I worked for the paint people, my brother's company, mm. Dara. And I worked various sectors. And trust you me, I wouldn't be the entrepreneur that I am now had I not worked for a lot of people and failed in a lot of businesses starting up. But majority of Anongo Piwa start up cash. Trust you me. Um, I've seen so many who, like you're saying, mm. where they get given. I mean, the Bible has a very amazing story of the prodigal son. You know, I got to go to beg him, Dara. Let me go do my thing. And because um, majority of our kids nowadays, they don't, they think, get rich quick. One owner is a tight out as a Ponzi scheme. They invest this, you get that. Quick money, microwave. But they don't understand that you know, a journey of building a business is a step at a time. You see, if we look at some of the most established businesses, you know, they are 100, 150 years old. In Indota, Zagun, Zwisisavana, Vane, Vabereke, Vagatanga, a business before, and they don't want to channel in to the already existing source of income. What do you know? I want to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. You can always do your own thing, but you are in the structure of you know, that thing that is already being done and bringing in money. Yeah. You know, there's one of greatest business people here in Zimbabwe. I saw his son working at a food outlet as a waiter. 
And there's no wow. way that child will understand how to become an FD or the CEO mm -hmm. had he not gone through the journey of understanding of, of starting Kuti, there. A, a packet of potatoes, Anubika, how many packets of chips. Mm -hmm. That way he'll be able to manage from the top, understanding how resources are being misused at the bottom. True. So the challenge with our kids, they want to look nice, they want to drive the big cars, but they, they don't understand. They want the beautiful stores. Kuti Chinche, yeah. Tanga from ground up but they, why is it that we don't want to take the long road we just want it quick i want to start selling clothes like a shop young i want to have everything sorted yeah. i want to start this business so i must have an office i must i must i you must know, I, I have friends who began their businesses selling clothes in the back of a car but we don't want to do that now and the challenge with our generation um you know thank god for 5g and 4g and all this wi-fi you know, Udara, you take one hour ah, to download the song. Guy. So these days, we can download da. So the, our generation believes in microwave solutions, and they think that's life. But that's not life. That's not reality. Everything takes time. And whatever comes to you quickly will also diminish very quickly. So most of our generation um, is not understanding that. Kuti, a seed takes time to grow. So mm. is it a business. So we can a shop. There are many people who I've seen yeah. who've gotten their shop fully packed with all the things. Dad, I want to do this. Um, Dad, I'll put it a bag. And those rental places are like six months in advance. Can Imagine that. Yeah. But then you won't see it until you're not making profit. You're going through a lot of expenses. You need to understand what is your gross profit, what's your net. Because Chinja was not order, you don't know the cost. And you don't know what margin you're putting and you're not factoring in all these other expenses. Mm. Yeah. What? But they so, just want to start businesses. Yeah. So, you know, to summarize the question up, um, start off where you are. Start small. Mm. That's the most important thing. Start small and grow steadily. Do not be, unfortunately, because of social media. Trust you me, Becky, when people see somebody driving a Mercedes Benz or all these top of the range vehicles, and when they pressure, would I want that? But they don't understand it took that person 20, 30 years for him mm, to be mm, there. Mm. So we're being misled as, you know, young people, even some grown ups. You find Ungamun, Wane Mota, you know, Dura, but there's no, there's no understanding. Wait, you have to take care of the most important things. Yeah. It's not about looking good only. You know, and, and that's what's pushing our generation to believe in this get rich quick. It's affecting our boys. Our ladies is, are doing a is. lot of unnecessary things which are causing them to, you know, lose focus of their life after chasing, you know, these branded, um, you know, <laughs> clothes and bags. <laughs> and I want this phone with four cameras and three plate stove. Yeah, it three is, three uh, plate stove to the world. Yes, that's you. That's <laughs> not me. Yeah, so, um, yeah. So, you know, let, let's, let's I would, start, I where we are. start where we I are. I think that's why you, you, you're always talking about start where you are. Mm. Start with what you have. And then you will grow. And I think it's the steadiness of business. Like when you start where you are and you see the mistakes and you can correct the mistakes and you know how not to repeat that mistake. And then you are growing steadily in that line of business. Cyril, good afternoon to you. I was wondering what time you were going to send a message. And then Cyril, Nasi George of the Jungle. <laughs> can you first give out the number? No mm. business. Let's let's do the order of the business for today. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got a question from 5119. And uh, their question is, which business should I start with 100 US? I, I am in a high density suburb. Wow. So my, my answer to you is I, I would want to know what your environment is like. You know, I always like going to places and seeing what people don't have. There's mm -hmm. some people who never actually travel to go to town. There's a lot of things that you can bring for people to actually sell in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. you know. So, so for me, I would want to understand what the environment is like and, and then be able to provide a solution. It's very difficult to, to just off-head say, what business should I do? And also, where they are not natural salespeople. Okay. So it's very difficult without knowing or seeing the person mm. to advise, but wait us in a hundred dollars. I definitely would tell you not to invest it in Zurich um, Amazonas, but you know, yeah. um, rather look at the challenges your community is facing 
You know, and then I tell people, they will think some freeze it. Anything that brings some money back, I was grade six back then. But you know what? That humbled me. It taught me, could wait, if you put a little on a little, pack it to my freezes, and I ten dollars, I made 20. Then I think it's a two, nine, four. And then I, I got independent at a young age where I didn't rely on getting money from my parents. Mm. You know, so it, it's seeing the things that people need. Right. You know, it's winter. There are scarves you can buy. There are things. There's so many things, you know, dollar deals that you can, you know, multiply your oh, money. Yeah, yeah, so so yeah. keeping your money as $100, I don't believe in saving because money doesn't grow by saving, especially as, as entrepreneurs. Yeah, money like don't does. save as a mm. means of investment. You are saving because you're saving towards something. I used to think saving was the way, the truth, mm. and the life. And mm. I just discovered, mm. and also, I'd rather buy something that will bring uh, money back. Money back. Um, there's a talk I was listening to, and uh, it was an uncle and a nephew. Mm. And uh, he was this nephew was telling his uncle that, no, I want to buy myself, you know, luxury stuff. And the uncle was like, I'll smack you upside the head right now. Why do mm. you want to be doing that? What you need to do is when you have a certain amount of money. And, um, and I think he had got like an in, like, um, inheritance. So he had money. Yeah. But his mind was on Ooh, luxury goods. So he was saying, get yourself an asset that will generate money for, me, for you. And then the money that the asset gives you is what you should be using to buy your luxury goods and you know, creating the lifestyle that you want. But not the other way around, that you get a lump sum of money and then you want to be using it on a luxurious lifestyle. True that. You know, it reminds me of my good mentor, um, Dr. Stephen Margolis. Mm. Um, once we were talking and he was saying, George, um, the challenge with your generation is that you want to look rich. You want to talk rich. You want to drive rich. But George, if you look at the people here in the country of Zimbabwe and look at the type of clothes they wear, are they they blinging up or are they and he said a quote to me and he said real money does not make noise so he says i have a hundred dollar bill in my pocket i have money but then you find people with coins look good but then they're not worth a lot so as you go on with your life be incognito mm. work hard under the radar do what you have to do don't focus on those people who are giving you unnecessary pressure you know, if you're to go, you know, you see people over the weekends popping bottles, living a lavish life, mm -hmm. posting this, that. But if you go to their homes and find out are their family is happy, uh, are things okay? It's probably the other way around. You see, it's they're not, faking yeah. it. But, mm -hmm. you know, so it's important to be disciplined enough, which is what our topic of today is. Which you is know, there's the a difference between being motivated and being disciplined. I don't know if we're going to have time because questions are now coming in. Um, maybe one more? No, then, let's go. Let's go. Let's do the question. All right. Anzi, hi, Becky. Hi, George. It's Sammy. I always enjoy tuning into your show. You know, you know, you know, power of I can do anything. Oh, I mm. love that feeling. Mm. <laughs> My question for Sir Billy. I think that's a nice name. Yo, Billy, yo, Hi, Billy, yo, Billy, yo, Billy. <laughs> okay. My question for Sir Billy is, how do you know who or whom to invest in and make sure that someone will not take advantage of you? Mm -hmm. And I want to help people to start businesses, but and they don't go pamu numari, and then mm. you know they are careless with it. Yeah. So hold that one. And then the next question is, ko asitorina aripa zero anu tanga se. Yeah. Right, okay, so do not tanga nice story now. Mm -hmm. I think I've said this um, the last time. Do you know one of the greatest ways to learn is to volunteer. So people who say, "Kuti, um, I can't do anything because I don't have capital," go and volunteer your services for free. Trust you me. You may say, "George, it doesn't make sense for free," but you know what? Go and volunteer. Hi, you know, especially when you know what you want to do. I think one thing I've said specifically to some of the people who mentor me. And people say, George, how do you get close to all these big names? Mm -mm. I, I volunteered to take them for lunch. Yeah, I had some money to take them for lunch. Mm -hmm. But some of them I volunteered to be sent around by them and do some of their errands. So wait, and wait. Then, so what words are you saying? I'm trying to picture you with Philip Giango. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to picture you doing errands for Philip. 
what words are coming out of your mouth? But I'm directing going to do my no it. I say what? What you know, words am I do saying? Do you know? Do you know one thing about my relationship with Dr. Philip Chiangwa mm. is that um, it took me five years to actually get an order from Dr. Philip, and Dr. Philip is somebody who is very analytical of character, because he has told me that George, you know, when we say one on one on one, it's money, money, money. Everybody wants, wants, wants. Mm, mm. But the thing with you, you're different. You actually want to learn, learn, learn from me. And this is why I then started accommodating you into my space. Right. And because I used to ask, and then one time he was like, hey, George, I want to go for a meeting. Let's go in your car. I went with him. We go for lunch. You know, I paid the bill. He sold this guy wants to serve. And then in return, what he did for me, he opened up so many jobs for me because he mm. saw my character and my heart. And he had also understood, but no, 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 this young man, Dagamona, are up up. And, you know, he's always told me, you know, um, I used to see him, Dinimaka wonder fit, Kachi is like, you know, you're growing, but you're not changing your lifestyle. You're making the business grow. You're buying pro air cars to make sure that the business grows. Right. So, so he, he saw what I'm about and he then openly then referred me to people. Okay. So when you volunteer your services, like I'm saying, mm -hmm. I mean, I've done that with so many people who I call my mentors. Mm -hmm. Don't go and seek money. If you have no money at all and you want to actually begin somewhere, go and volunteer your services to an organization and say, hi, I just want to work here for, upon, I promise you, there's so many people who I know who I've told to do this and they are working in organizations. Yeah. Some of them ultimately then got recruited because when you are so good at something, people cannot ignore you. Then they'll say, but listen, this guy is not qualified for marketing, but you know what? He's bringing in more sales than this. Let's tie this guy down. And bank him become this, that, and the ah, other. So we spoke the, about that. Do you remember the story of Les Brown? Yes, yes, yes. Les Brown, same thing. I can yeah. radio. I just remember I just to hike. Is there a job? Pana zingwele. I'll work for free. But guess what? When that opportunity comes and people see how good you are, because can only come People can't see the gifting that mm, you have. Mm. But what I'm about to talk about, I'm about to trust you. Me, there aren't a lot of jobs out there. Yeah, but if you put yourself go and there. volunteer somewhere. Go and volunteer sooner than later. Can or muna no shanda retrokwadi. Those people will recruit you because you are so good at what you do. So you're being different than when we say Go to organizations where you say, Hey, I like this. I want to learn. Chauno vanachi koko is far more better than somebody who actually is just sitting at home and listening to us and not doing anything about their lives. So you are pushing for like in the direction that you know your strength is go and volunteer that particular service. Mm. So if you know that you you can clean a place pretty good, top notch. Go and volunteer um, like at a place where you've been eyeing him. Like, hey, my name is mm. and I would like to offer Chichiji. I don't know Gunogurambajo, but I don't think every door will say no. That's right. That's right. Keep yeah, knocking. Keep every, knocking. Every door that says no should be motivation for you to keep trying. And two was one at that one place. You know, most of the time, one wagons in Noka, they think it's the end of the world. Oh, but no. sometimes the <laughs> biggest no's I ever got mm -hmm. were blessings in disguise. You know, in Indaimbo, Fire, Begu, Mabasa, Esanda, Shanda, because I had a passion for the marketing department, mm -hmm. which people didn't understand. They got engines, no, no, this is too much. Don't do this flyer distribution. But there was so much zeal in me. Ultimately, yeah. it was for pro aid. It wasn't for those people. Pandaka Zotanga, my own entrepreneurial journey. Now I could do all that zeal I had. And that's what's propelled us to where we are today. Had I done that for those people, yeah. you know, it would have changed a lot of things back then. All right. And then uh, the question, Yaguti, how do I know whom to invest in? I would say, uh, you know, it's, it's a very difficult question to answer because it's, it's open-ended. But um, I would say, you know, um, I would always invest in a business that I know, um, that I can have, you know, um, what sales have they been making? What exactly is the product that they're selling? Is it something that mm, ultimately mm. can grow my money? Because um, businesses I've invested in, I want to see the return on investment. If I put a thousand dollars after six months, what's the growth and stuff like that? So okay. don't, don't, don't quickly invest in something you don't understand. 
and also understand visit, it first yeah, and visit then the place see just don't be itchy to invest otherwise you'll make some serious ish, losses just don't be itchy yeah. to invest you know kuna ngwana anonzi hi mdara kuna gold i remember there were some guys ah kuna gold mm. i've got a, you know a place maga sa 10000 in 3 months it would but you know what i went and i researched Taka uzo kanzi amgura mamtu kuzi tapa duze ne bandi mdara makaunza hime chichi 5,000 tunu vajayi Okay so this is but like then, an investment for us to keep digging You see but then, but then if you don't understand it you can be there so many people listening to me who are nodding their heads saying George we know what you're talking about <laughs> God. we have lost money but wakazo vunza vanu they will tell you no 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 do it correctly go with somebody who cites the place who understands this then you okuza. otherwise wangu nzunza mari it's you know you you can't expect to understand the business if you are a cell phone farmer i was when the price will go for how far right there oh i said that doesn't work in business you have to be hands on you have to be practical you really have to understand mm. um, what you're investing and what you're getting yourself in for you to to get some reward from it it's Capitalk 100.4 FM. We got George Billionaire, Sir Billy, <laughs> in the building for Hustle Hard. And uh, we're just going through some questions. And we haven't even touched today's topic at all. Um, but as he's answering the questions, I'm sure you will hear today's topic just dropping in there. So far, he's already spoken about discipline. He's spoken about motivation. And I'm sure as we tie it down, uh, he will give us what he wanted to tell us today. Simba in Glenora says, Hi, Becky, I need advice. I'm interested in starting a formal gas uh, business, uh, even at a larger scale. My challenge is I don't have money to go through the formal process, like registering it, yet um, do you think it's a good idea to start informally and as an experienced person, it's really viable to start that kind of business in the case of our environment? Do you know, I would say to Simba, one who Glenora and Rob and Akura, so big up to Simba, mm. big up to big Glenora. Up, big up. Pim, 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 pim. Glenora massive. A lot of great <laughs> things have come out of Glenora. So yeah. shout out to all those people from Glenora. Mm. Um, I would say the greatest secret to getting ahead is getting started. If you wait for the perfect weather to plant a seed, it will never be perfect. <laughs> yeah, Sakas Tanga, my, my recommendation to you is get started and you know, formalize yourself very quickly. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you wait for the longer process, and trust you, Miku Glenora, we all know what's going on. There's a lot of opportunities. You've got high volumes. Gas is mm. a volumes business. Mm. And mm. you can mm. set up pa, pa Kenan West and Paya. Okay. Or set up pa Spaceman. You know, there, there's a lot. You, you, you a lot already of, have the locations I have planned al out. I, I already have locations. Don't you want to help Simba, George? Yeah. You've got a one-on-one in a Simba Dara. Yeah, should I give Simba my number? Please give, but, Sim but okay, no, we'll, we'll type it. All right, Simba, we'll type. you, you, you <laughs> we'll get type. my number. <laughs> because I'm just thinking now, I was about to say your number out and got it. No one else with Zima phone, Mdara, Manu, Bakungo, Ramba, Vachi phone. So Simba, uh, George is going to uh, give you his details and then you'll be in touch. But please don't abuse George for us, eh? I beg. Ask your questions straightforward, get the help that you need, and... Um, just yeah, just respect the business protocols. It is ten minutes to one o'clock. Uh, George, motivation will uh, d sorry, discipline will take you to places where motivation cannot. That's right. So the distance between dreams and reality is mm -hmm. discipline. The distance between Dream dreams <coughs> and reality for it to be tangible should right. is discipline. That's right. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people love the motivation we give every Monday here on Capital Talk. But motivation is one thing. Uh, sure. Trust you me, every day we need to bath. It's a must. Mm -hmm. Motivation you can get every day. But what you do with the motivation is what's important. But a lot of people like to hear. You know, I, I like people who go to church on Sunday. How was the word on Sunday, Becky K? What is the usual response? That was good. It was powerful. powerful. Ah, yes. It was powerful. Power packed. Power packed. <laughs> but, you know, all of us are hearing the same message, but only a few will do something with what they hear. Kaiban. You see. So there's a discipline that's needed to act upon certain things mm -hmm. in order for you to get the reality that you want. Mm -hmm. And, you know, discipline leads to habits, right? Mm -hmm. Habits lead to consistency.
-hmm. and consistency leads to growth. So unless you're disciplined, if you want to have a six-pack, if you want to look good, if you want to be fit and healthy, you have to have a discipline of waking up every single morning and taking a walk, taking a run, yeah. going to the gym, mm. doing those weights. Mm, mm. You'll never get a six-pack by watching a motivational video on how to get a six-pack. I almost got a my video. I wanna, but Come on, get up! Move it! But, but, but that, <laughs> that fitness, that health you want will never come out of the TV and come on you. Mm. You have to take an act to actually begin to do something. Mm -hmm. But majority of people love the motivation, but they don't like the deed of actually doing something. You know, self-discipline is um, when your inner man tells you something that you need to do, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't talk back. So majority of us want success. So mm -hmm. you have to wake up early in the morning. Yeah. But one of them is a snooze and you keep prolonging. When you want success so much, when you want to be different, trust you me, the discipline for you to get fit is to wake up early and exercise. But it's so easy to say, I ah, know I'll do it later. Mm -hmm. So in order for us to be great and successful, trust you me, there has to be a serious discipline that we have to have. All people who I know, who I associate with, have a serious work ethic. They are disciplined. And you know, where they put discipline, huh? It's doing what needs to be done when you don't feel like it. That's discipline. You have to. If you want your business to be successful, trust you me. I did it way back, Becky, when I used to go Kunomira Road, Dishno Distributor, my flyers, and you know, I would do a lot of things. You know, I would, I would mm -hmm. market my product, my service. But others want things just to happen easy. But there's a specific discipline that we all need to apply in our lives in order for us to become great and what we want to be. So, George, are you saying we are not where we want to be because we're not disciplined? That's Dis what you are just basically selling, that's I mean, it. telling that's us it. right now. Um, so, self-discipline okay, is yes. mastering yourself. So, I don't Understand. have what I do, what I want because do I'm not. <laughs> let me tell you something. Amy. There are people today who are listening to us. Mm -hmm. Time is important. We spoke about it last yes, week. Yes, time is very important. Self-discipline, you manage time, you go actually determines what you end up becoming. Mm. There are people today who walk up social media, they went from every different, from FB, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, Snapchat. They spent four or five hours Very just being consumed. Media. That's mm. lack of discipline. Saka time Yahoo is being consumed on unnecessary garbage, which is not building you up. You know, I like this statistic that said TikTok Yahoo China, right? is helping people to become more productive. Mm. If you look at TikTok, you go Africa. It's people dancing, doing silly things, unproductive things. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Whatever the mind constantly sees and hears, ultimately we become. Which is why you'll see most of our kids' videos. It's dancing, doing silly, productive things. But if you, if you try and look at what China does, they've you know, purposely made sure that whatever's on social media is building these kids up. There's how yeah. to AI, there's how to yeah. this. But there's that's not tips the on you know, stuff that they share with us. But anyway, no, but it's, it's a story it's, for another Yeah, day. it's an algorithm which mm. chooses what. But with yeah. us here, and Makua, we spend, you see, entertainment. Saka, saka lack, of, lack of that discipline. You know, if you're disciplined to, to say to yourself, and like we spoke last time, mm. you know, I take 20 minutes every day to read a book. It's a discipline. So, you know, there are a lot of people who say, George, I always see you parked at this place. So from 8 to 8.20, I'm reading my book. It's discipline. It's a habit that's become... That you are, you, you are making use of your 20 minutes in a productive manner. My phone is by the side. I read that book consistently and I read mm -hmm. 20, 30 pages. But it's discipline of doing something consistently. And there's a book called Outliers. You know, Taura, when you do something consistently, Consistently, for mm -hmm. 10,000 hours, you become a pro at it. Mm. And there's nobody in your field or expertise who will be who able better to, than you. Yeah. You know, you'll be so good that people cannot ignore you. But that comes with the discipline. It does. If you look does. at the guys who do bodybuilding every day, their diet is specific. The times they go to the gym is specific. Ultimately, because he can see what he ultimately wants to become. That's it, yeah. So he's disciplined today and he sacrifices the immediate now. 
Wangwe warukutu ya, you know, I, I can't, I have to go out, I have to spend money, I have to do this. Mm -hmm. But the people who are going to be successful in five years from now are not going to the clubs, popping bottles, you know, living this extravagant life. Yeah. But they are disciplining themselves. It's not nice. Yeah. It's You're sacrificing your funds, fun. your time to focus on a craft that you want to be known for. Mm -hmm. But then the rewards will show later. So our lack of discipline of sacrificing the immediate now is what's going to affect our future. Lack of discipline is going to cost you in the future. Because die, but then it's too late because you weren't disciplined when you were supposed to. I think and we need there'll a be part nobody two. else to blame for that. I think we need a part two for this one. Three minutes to one o'clock, zero seven one nine one hundred four zero four. You can send through your questions, your contributions. Uh, if we have time to go through some questions, we will go through them. Um, if not, definitely there's going to be a part two. I'm requesting a part two. I'm yeah. definitely requesting a part two. You brought in an interesting aspect about um, the, the bodybuilder, that he has a specific diet, a, spef a specific time, and, you know, specific exercises that he will do because he has a vision that of he wants to attain. Can you just quickly talk to us about that yeah. the vision aspect? So I think it's important that people need to understand um, where they want to be ultimately and what you need to sacrifice for what you want. If, if you know what you want to be, trust you me, you're going to give a lot of time and you're going to kill a lot of distractions. Mm -hmm. I feel our generation, um, social media is such an amazing blessing. Yeah. But it is actually becoming a very big curse for us because we're focusing on the wrong things and we're indisciplined to spend most of our time on the phone being very unproductive. You know, if you calculate the amount of time that is being taken by your phone doing unproductive things, where you can actually say, I'm going to discipline myself to, we spoke about this last week. Hmm. We were saying, I'm going to put this aside and work now yeah. and focus. And focus you on know it. what? I'm going to go, put my phone on silent. I'll call those people later. But because this handheld device, notification after notification. So it's important that we become disciplined individuals. We know exactly what we want to ultimately become. If you don't know what you're going to become, Ultimately, anything will do. But if you know what I mean, I want to lose weight, 5 kgs. That's your goal. You'll have discipline every single day to work towards achieving that thing that you want. But lack of that, trust you me, you're going to live your life as you want. And without a goal, a vision, discipline won't matter. Which is why a lot of us... Ah. Uh, like, so why are you being disciplined? You're being disciplined for what? Have yeah. a vision, have a goal, have something that you want to attain. As we shut it down, um, there is going to be a part two. So stick around. Next week, Monday, we get into part two of uh, Hustle Hard with the, t with the topic, uh, Discipline Will Take You Places Where Motivation Cannot. It is one o'clock. Stand by for the news. Hala hala, it's your boy George Billionaire and you're listening to Cappy Talk 100.4 FM Harare's Heartbeat with yours truly, Becky Kane.